Tomorrow marks the 49th anniversary of the assassination of Robert F. Kennedy. One year after his tragic death, the Robert F. Kennedy Children's Action Corps launched here in Massachusetts and quickly became a national leader in child welfare, juvenile justice, and care for youngsters who may have psychological or behavioral problems, often as a result of neglect or abuse. Each year, the organization celebrates the legacy of Robert F. Kennedy through its Embracing the Legacy event, which not only raises funds and awareness, but it also includes a special award presentation to several members of the community. One of this year's honorees is William Little, president of the KEY program. Bill leads a team of social service workers in improving the lives of more than 650 children. Under his leadership, the KEY program operates 22 community-based residential programs, two mental health clinics, and a variety of home-based service models throughout Massachusetts and Rhode Island. Bill has, a child, has been a child welfare advocate for 45 years. And joining Bill this morning is Cecilia Roddy. She's the Vice President of Development and External Affairs for RFK Children's Action Corps, who will give us more details on her organization and on the special award presentations coming up on Friday. Welcome to Urban Update. So glad to have you here. Thank you. Thank you very much. Cecilia, let me start with you. Uh, just give us a few more details about uh, your organization and um, the work that you've been doing uh, at the RFK uh, Foundation for more than 48 years now. Sure. So we were founded um, <clears throat> after Robert F. Kennedy was killed to carry on his legacy, um, in particular to the poor and disadvantaged children, um, children who experience trauma or neglect. And um, since then, today, we are a national leader. We do child welfare and juvenile justice work. And we are working with um, both children directly in Massachusetts and then also changing systems um, throughout the country. So we're in about 20 other states to try and improve the lives for children and families. Wow. Now, what kind of uh, impact do you think this has had on the, uh, on the community for all these years? And, and who, uh, who's benefiting from all of this? Yeah. I think um, in many ways we all benefit, um, but more directly, through the work, our direct service programs that work with the children um, in their home as well as in our programs, um, the children benefit and then their families and communities benefit. When they're safe and healed and healthy, um, that ripples forward. Um, and then nationally, because of our work in about 20 different states, I would say tens of thousands of children now will have their lives changed and therefore communities and families will be stronger. Wow. So now the big night is uh, coming up on Friday. You'll be recognizing, among uh, other people, Bill a little here. Uh, uh, it's going to be, sounds like it's going to be a special night. It's going to be a special night. Um, we, the Embracing the Legacy Award was created to really um, carry out Robert F. Kennedy's legacy and to honor individuals who exemplify that through their work, through their, their lives. Um, and it's a national award, and Bill is um, our, a local recipient, but um, as you can, as you will hear soon, um, very, very worthy. Well, Bill, uh, congratulations. <laughs> uh, Thank you how are you much. feeling about uh, getting this uh, great honor? It's unbelievable. Um, you know, I've gone to a couple of the events in the past, and uh, I have to say that I've often uh, dreamed or fantasized about uh, receiving such an award. Um, so it's quite an honor. I'm very, very excited. Um, so when Ed Kelly, who's the president of RFK, called me up, uh, I would say that um, I've known Ed for uh, probably my full career, 45 years, and I would say it's the first right decision he's ever made <laughs> by giving me this honor. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's unbelievable. Um, it's going to be a great night. Uh, it's an opportunity for uh, the people I work with to also share in the award. Um, and my family to share in the award and the greater community. So, okay. um, well, let's talk static. about okay. Let's let's talk about the um, the key program a little bit. Sounds like you've been uh, very busy. Uh, talk to me a little bit about the work that your program does. So similar to RFK, um, we were started in 1974 when they closed down the reform schools here in Massachusetts. It was founded by uh, two brothers. One was going to Clark and one was going to Harvard. And they've been doing some volunteer work at the training schools. And then when they closed the training schools, the state began a contract for services. Um, so as um, you heard earlier, or you mentioned earlier, we have um, work with about 650 kids a day across Massachusetts and in Rhode Island. Um, we have uh, about 525 staff. We run detention programs for girls, independent living programs for girls. Uh, we run group homes for kids from their partner and children and the family. I have to say also that in Massachusetts, Massachusetts is an extremely 
generous state in supporting kids and families, all the way from the administration down through the legislature and the community and people at large. It's a wonderful state to have an opportunity to provide really important services to kids. So we do have a commonwealth here in Massachusetts. Well, you mentioned closing on reform schools. I haven't even heard that term in a long time, yeah. reform schools. Yeah. Uh, why, in your, your view, is this um, was so important? And uh, what impact do you feel you're, you're making? Well, I'll tell you, we, we, I think we make impact in uh, two principal areas. So obviously we make an impact, hopefully, on the kids that we work with. Um, sometimes we don't see immediate results. Um, but if, you, um, if you're working with a child who hasn't been going to school for a long time and they're now going to school, or if you see a smile on one of the kids' faces and they haven't smiled in a long time, or if you have a kid say thank you, those are extremely rewarding to the staff that work with these kids. But as not as important as helping the kids, but all the staff we employ, um, even if most of them or a lot of them might not wind up spending the career in human services, when they leave, whatever field they go into, maybe it's going to go into your field, having worked with kids, they'll have a greater appreciation as they move forward in their life for those who are as fortunate as um, mm -hmm. we all have been. Now, Cecilia, talk to me about how the key program, Bill's program here, <coughs> ties in with the RFK Children's Action Corporation uh, mission. Mm -hmm. um, it aligns almost perfectly. I mean, we, we believe that you have to start with the child, um, children um, who are healthy and happy and who have a sense of hope um, turn into adults who are productive and happy and uh, with gifts to give. So the work, uh, very much of our work aligns, obviously, with uh, Department of Children and Families and working with children who experience trauma and abuse. But our, our philosophy aligns, because it really is about giving people the opportunity to do their best work and to be the best selves. And best uh, I guess, how, do, how does a child come into your, your organization? And uh, sort of what is the path for a child to find their way to you? Sure. It could be a number of ways. So we have residential programs. Um, we contract with the Department of Children and Families, also in the Department of Youth Services. So for those children, they come to us um, from the state um, directly, and they, we work with them in our residential programs. Um, in other cases, we have special ed programs. So the school districts may refer a young person who might not have been going to school to come work with us. So we have a much more sort of specialized, intensive focus there. And we go to others in the community. So our community-based programs, we're in the courts in Dorchester, in Springfield, in Holyoke to try and divert young people um, from detention. And Bills, is this pretty much the same for you, or how do kids find their way yeah, to your so program? Basically the same thing. You know, we have um, most of our business with contracts with different state agencies, the Juvenile Justice Agency, DYS, DCF, um, some mental health, uh, mental health uh, third-party payers. So they all enter through one of those systems. Um, what, what I'd like to mention, too, is thinking of what you were just saying. We have programs as far out as Pittsfield, wow. Springfield, up in the Lawrence, mm -hmm. down through uh, Wareham, down through uh, the southeastern part of Massachusetts, anything outside of Greater Boston and in Providence. Um, there's one other point I would like to make um, is that these kids um, and their families, they all need what you and I need. They need to feel respected. They need dignity, feel have dignity in their life, a good educational opportunity, they, and they need to be feel that they're loved and they be loved, love somebody. Okay, so, and we'll you. leave it right there. It sounds like you're uh, you're both doing just amazing work. Congratulations, thank you and, very much. Uh, and uh, you know, knock them dead with your speech yeah. on it, Friday. Yeah. Is it too late to get your autograph? <laughs> okay. okay, all right. You can have it right here anytime you want. <laughs> Bill Little, Cecilia Roddy, thanks for coming in. I'll thank get you. you that autograph. Thank you so much. Okay, all right. Well, that's it for this edition of Urban Update. I'm Byron Barnett. From all of us here at Urban Update, have a great Sunday, everybody.